it's been a while since we've had a retro handheld to review, and the latest, the RJ353PS has arrived. So let's have a butchers at it. First we have the Ambenic RJ353PS itself, we will take a closer look at it shortly. Underneath is a user manual which is in Chinese and English. Up next we have a screen protector and wipes for when applying it. And last but not least, inside the cardboard box is a USB charge cable. The RJ353PS is available in three colours, grey, transparent white and transparent purple. The design is inspired by the classic SNES controller with a hint of Game Boy on the display area. It measures around 2.9 by 3.1 by 0.78 inches and weighs 213 grams. The display is a 3.5 inch IPS with a 640x480 resolution. It's the same used on previous models and is good quality. You have your usual gaming buttons and two analog sticks. There is a function button on the left and the power button on the right middle areas which are both within easy reach. Along the top is a USB Type-C port for peripherals, a reset button and a HDMI port for output to a TV or monitor which we will show later. There's a volume rocker and a second USB Type-C port which is used for charging. On the bottom there are two micro SD card slots, the first is used for the Linux operating system and the second for your game storage. In between them is a 3.5mm headphone port. On the back are two textured areas to provide some grip. Overall the RG353PS is very comfortable to hold. It's larger than the SNES controller, but I've always found them a little too small. It's more like the size of a third party controller, which provides more room for your hands. I did find the ABXY buttons a little rough compared to say the Mario Mini Plus buttons, but it's a minor thing to be fair. The Ambenic RG353PS features the well-known and used RK3566 processor which runs up to 1.8GHz. There's 1GB of LPDDR4 RAM and for storage it comes with a 16GB card for the OS. The second slot you can use up to a 512GB card supplied by yourself. For communications there's Wi-Fi 5 emulator supporting multiplayer and Bluetooth 4.2 to connect peripherals to. The 3500 mAh rechargeable battery will last up to 6 hours depending on what system you are playing on. The Ambenic RG353PS uses the EMULX style interface which is very easy to use and is responsive. By the way, if you are looking for how to add games to your micro SD card, check out our step by step guide and our knowledge base linked in the description. From the main menu you can press the start button to access plenty of settings including setting up the Wi-Fi, game scraping and themes. Once your games are on the micro SD card they will show up on their respective consoles which can be navigated with left and right. Simply press A to enter a game list and up and down or the shoulder buttons to skip a page. Then press the A button again to start the emulator and load the game. While it's in game you can press the function button to bring up the retro arch menu. You can also start a netplay game on compatible system cores. For this you do need to be using the same ROM and emulator. From here you can also save and load save states, take screenshots, restart or quit the game amongst many other options. The RG353PS supports HDMI output via a mini HDMI to HDMI cable. It outputs to 720p and looks relatively clear even on a 4K monitor. There's no real noticeable lag between the input and seeing on screen so that's all good. The OS and menus work great. We like that it only shows the systems you have installed games for so you do not have to browse through loads of empty ones. It's easy to use and there's enough advanced options to keep the tinkerers happy. We are all probably familiar with the performance of the RK3566 processor by now. But if you are a newcomer, you can essentially emulate up to the PS1 and Dreamcast era with some PSP games as a bonus. Most people with preloaded cards will get around a dozen or so systems. They are the most popular ones, but by spending a little time yourself making a setup, you can access a great deal more. I thought it would be good to check out a few of the lesser known systems as well as some popular ones. 
The Intellivision was the first console I can remember playing when I was around 5 or 6. There are a few classics on here like Beam Rider, Burger Time and Dungeons and Dragons to name but a few. The ColecoVision had some great games on it. I can remember playing many of them at school friend's house. There were many arcade ports such as Frogger and Galaxians, but a fair number of exclusives as well. The Vectrex experience is nowhere near as cool looking as playing on one in real life, but the original hardware are pretty expensive now, so many will sadly not get that opportunity. These handhelds are very easy to play Vectrex on, and again there are some very playable games on it that you would normally never give a go. The Amstrad CBC 464 was my first home computer back in the 80s. It is also better than the Commodore 64 and Specky, and my word is final. Games that have joystick support should generally work straight away, without having to bring up a keyboard. There's some amazing games on this computer, and you should definitely check them out. Ok, I will admit that Amstrad GX4000 was lousy, but there were a couple of good games on it, like Pang for example. I did see a couple of glitches on some games, but that's emulation compatibility more than the hardware. The Specky is a bit like the Amstrad emulators, in which games that support joysticks require less effort to get working. Don't worry about the colours clashing, the original hardware did it, and that's why the Amstrad CBC is better. Seriously though, like the Amstrad, there's some great classics to check out on it if you never have. The 3DO does have some decent games on it, but it's often overlooked. I tried a couple of games and they are definitely playable. Some games do have some sound issues, usually the music, and that's most likely due to some frame skipping. Pico 8 is not a retro console, but instead it is a fantasy console that has actually not been made. It is based on a bunch of technical specifications that were standardised and the games are made to run for these specifications. You can find both remakes and hundreds of original games for this system, it's definitely worth checking them out. And onto some more familiar consoles now, starting with the Mega Drive. As you would expect, all of their games run great and you should not have any issues at all, and that's the same for the Mega CD and 32X. The Mega Drive sibling, the Sega Saturn, overall works very well. You may find some frame drops in games, but these are usually the dips you would find on the original hardware. I tried a few games including Daytona and Galactic Attack and they all worked great. And Sega's final console overall works very well. We tried the usual suspects such as Sonic Adventure 2 and Crazy Taxi and had no issues with performance. We did have one or two games not loading, but this may have been an issue with the disk image or emulator rather than hardware. You should have no issues with GBA emulation performance. We tried a few different genres of games and did not have any compatibility or performance issues. Everything was working great and the games looked spot on on this display. The PlayStation 1 overall works very well. For the vast majority of games you will not have any issues. One or two might have some compatibility issues or performance due to the emulator rather than hardware. The games run at great speeds and also look very good on this display. Our go-to PSP game is of course God of War. On the default settings we were getting around 20 to 22 frames per second. With some tweaking you can get it up to 30 which is playable. Other games such as Tekken 6 do run better, so your success may vary. The RG353PS does not do anything new in terms of hardware or features, it's all been done before one way or another. But as we are reviewing based on its own product, the RG353PS is a decent handheld. If you buy it elsewhere preloaded, then you're getting half the product. You are missing out on a fairly large number of systems you would otherwise not know are actually already on the RG353PS. 
There are all the consoles and computers mentioned earlier, plus the Commodore 64, Amiga, various Atari systems, Channel F, MSX, Odyssey 2, PC-98 and X6800, to name but a few. Take full advantage of your handheld and don't rely on rubbish preloaded setups. It's very easy to make your own. Download the ROM pack and copy it to the folder on the micro SD card. Don't forget we have a step by step guide linked in the description. Back to the handheld itself, we like the design of it. It's a nice mix of SNES and Game Boy. It's comfortable to use, though the finish on the buttons is a little rough compared to the My Mini Plus which I have been using a lot recently. If you do get one preloaded, there are a decent number of systems, but in my opinion, spend a bit of time to do it yourself and have double the experience. We have no real complaints about the device itself. There's nothing wrong with it in terms of design, usability or performance. It does not bring anything new to the handheld scene. If you have one, then you have them all. For newcomers to handhelds, then you can't go much wrong with the Ambonic RG353PS. You can learn more about the RG353PS and all the yours right now at droix.co.uk and droix.net for worldwide shipping. Use the discount code RG353PS5OFF for 5% off. Please note that the code may expire after one month and cannot be used with other codes or during store sales. That wraps up our Ambonic RG353PS review. We hope you have found it useful. Please take a moment to subscribe and keep up to date on our latest videos. We hope to see you back in the next one.